So we, we can talk about the scenario. We're going to talk about the case that the confidence interval for population mean is the goal. And suppose this is the scenario that the population standard deviation or sigma is given. Let us take a look at one example. Let's see how we can apply the method of constructing a confidence interval for population mean in action. Very good. So in this example, a college admissions director wishes to estimate the mean age to estimate the mean age of all students currently enrolled. Very good. So here we have a keyword. The mean age of all students. It means that that director wants to estimate the population mean. So this is actually population mean. But remember that to find the population mean, we need to ask every student. It takes time. It requires a lot of resources to do that. So what that director does instead, that director starts collecting information from a random sample. So in a random sample, in a random sample of 20 students, okay, we have a sample with 20 students in that sample. The mean age is 22.9 years. Very good. So take a look at this. We have a population and we collected a random sample from 20 students. So it means that the sample size is 20. 20 is going to be our N. The mean age in that sample is 22.9. It means that X bar or the samples average is given to us. The sample size is 20 and the average of the sample is 22.9 years. Well, we also know that from the past study, the population standard deviation is also given to us as sigma 1.5 years. Let us circle this. This is another important piece of information that we're going to use later. Okay. Now the question says, construct a 90% confidence interval. Very good. So let us begin. When you are trying to construct a confidence interval for population mean, when sigma is given, you have to follow the steps as below. Step one. This is our very first step. We're going to find the point estimate. Point estimate or the best estimator for our population mean. The point estimate for population mean is sample mean. X bar or the sample mean is the best estimator, which in this case is given to us as 22.9 years, 22.9. So keep that in mind, X bar is already given in the question, 22.9 years. Well, 
I have my point estimate. It means that I'm allowed to go to the next step, step two. In step two, we need to identify the confidence level. What is the level of confidence? Well, remember that if the level of confidence is not given to you, you're going to use 95%. But take a look at the question on the last line. It says, hey, construct a 90% confidence interval. So C or the confidence level is 90%. Remember, in order to use our calculator, we need to enter it as decimal, 0.90. Why I need the confidence level? I use the confidence level to find the critical value for Z sub C, which is related to standard normal distribution. So standard normal distribution, this is what we have. This is a standard normal distribution with Z values. 90% is the area below the graph, all right? So this is 90%. The area below the graph, which is 90%. Our goal is to find the Z sub C. We want to know what is this critical value. Remember that since we are working with a standard normal distribution, mean is zero and standard deviation is one. Well, if you're interested in using TI-84, you need to find this little area to the left-hand side, which is 100% minus 90% divided by two, or 10% divided by two, or point 0, 0.5. This is the area that we're going to enter into our calculator. It gives us a negative z score. So go to second, vars, find inverse norm. So let's turn on the calculator. Second, vars, find inverse norm. Guys, note that. This calculator doesn't have any left, center, or right. That's why we only have one option to enter the area as 5% to the left and compute the critical value with a negative sign. So the area that we're going to enter is 0 .05. 0 0.05. What is the mean? The mean of standard normal distribution is zero. The standard deviation of standard normal distribution is one. Guys, do not confuse this sigma with the sigma of your population. And it's a different study. That's a different example. We are using the area below the standard normal distribution to find the critical value, Zc. So let's do the computation. When you compute this, it gives you negative 1.645, negative 1.645. So ZC is positive 1 for 1.645. This is my ZC, 1.645. Circle this. You're going to use your critical value in the next stop. In step three, we're going to find the margin of error. Well, well, what's the formula for the margin of error? The formula for the margin of error for population mean when sigma is given to you is ZC, the number that you calculated in step two, times sigma population standard deviation divided by square root of n. n is your sample size. So margin of error becomes 1.645 times sigma. Sigma is the population standard deviation. Guys, this is what we are using here. 1.5 divided by square root of n. n is the sample size, 20. So 
if you use your calculator, it's going to approximate into 0.6. So it says the margin of error is about 0.6. Very good. Now let us move on to the last stop. Step four. In step four, we're going to build our confidence interval itself. So confidence interval, CI is approximately X bar. Remember that we start by using the point estimate minus the margin of error, comma, the point estimate, which is X bar plus the margin of error, all right? Well, well, let us just enter all of these pieces of information that we have. We know that X bar is 22.9 minus the margin of error that you calculated here, 0.6, comma, 22.9 plus 0.6. So my confidence interval approximately is 22.3, comma, 23.5. But what's the meaning of that? It means that the director, the admission director, is 90% confident, the director is 90% confident that the average students age is in between 22.3 years old and 23.5 years old. And 23.5 years old. That is the conclusion that we need at the end of the report. This is important for us. This is the last step that is very important when you're writing a statistical report for analyzing the data.